Today is Monday the 18th of May um, and so now we're moving into another week, yet another week in quarantine and lockdown although um, we're not quite so quarantined anymore or locked down. Um, you know life, life has opened up slightly uh, for most of us in the world now depending on where we're living um, but a lot of places are a lot more open and a lot more free um, all of a sudden over the over the past week um, and things have shifted and changed quite drastically um, and this has brought up a lot of thoughts and feelings um, about, about how we feel about it and um, you know we, we've learned a lot in in this two-month period of being in quarantine and we've changed a lot we've looked at the world we thought about it and we thought about our lives in the world how much space we take up what our impact upon that world has been whether it's been a good impact or a negative impact um, and and how we might how we might change you know that impact um, for better in the future and and now you know we're, we're kind of like moving outwards again slowly gently with baby steps um, we know we're all part of this big experiment that's come that's happening at the moment where we're guinea pigs really I mean nobody knows exactly what's going to happen we're coming out of quarantine and we're being told how to act um, but we've been being given conflicting information from different sources. So some people are saying, you know, stay, be careful, stay covered up, wear a mask, wear your gloves, um, you know, clean, 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 um, sanitize your hands. Um, you know, all of those things that we've been told before, some people are saying, yes, still do that, be really, really vigilant. And other people are saying, no, the better thing to do is to kind of like relax around that go out get loads of fresh air um you know walks healthy exercise without wearing a mask and without you know without kind of like fearing one another and, and distancing too much and um they're they're kind of like implying that that we'll be fine if we're outside and that we won't be able to catch anything off one another from just walking past even if we're closer than the suggested six feet and it's difficult to know who to believe and when your life is the life that is at stake potentially which is the case all of our lives are potentially at stake in this situation and our the decision that we make could potentially affect how we fare and that's that's kind of strange so it's like the quarantine and going into lockdown and being told we couldn't leave our homes for two weeks is what they told us at the very beginning so we didn't all panic and then it got extended and extended and extended that was like a big change and that took us a while to kind of get used to it to process it to accommodate it and then we adapted we built new routines and we learned how to live within that space and now we're having to change and adapt and build new routines all over again in this new space um, and I think it's different for everybody you know well I know it's different it's different for every single person right now um, but like some of us are maybe a little reluctant to to step back outside again maybe some of us quite like this slow more introverted insular way of life and others are so desperate to go outside that they're kind of like rushing out there head first and maybe they are not really thinking um, about potential consequences um, or maybe they just don't care because they so crave social interaction and connection with other people um, and I and I get both sides of that, and I am, I feel like I belong to both sides of that, as well. It's like um, I love people, and I love connection and interaction, and I love meeting up with friends, to to share conversation, um, and 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 a hug. You know, like hugging is amazing, and I miss hugging, and I miss. Um, you know sitting in close contact to the people who are important to me um, and yet 
I also don't feel the need to be around loads of people. Um, I feel like I want to be quieter and slower and spending more time in my own company and I don't want the hustle and the bustle and the noise of what things were like previously and as things are starting to pick up again and open up I'm finding myself resistant to the noise outside you know there's an increase in pollution even though it's like fairly minor but it's noticeable in the city um, there's a, an increase in noise and even though it's not the same noise that we had previously it's noisy enough to make a drastic difference to to my life and to to my peace and calm um, and, and I, f I feel that kind of like um, subtle hypervigilance turning back on again because any moment there could be you know like a car engine backfiring or someone shouting outside or a bang from you know like a door or a gate in the street and 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 one doesn't know what to expect whereas before for you know like a two month period there wasn't really any of that at all and it was almost like living in the country you just didn't have the view to go with it um and so like what i was what i'm kind of like um grappling with at the moment um and what i wanted to talk about here was the notion of is it okay to not be fully woke lots of people are talking about being woke and waking up yeah and um and about you know like like we have to change and we have to shift and we have to stand up and we have to count um and we have to be on the right side and if we're woke then we're acting in a certain way and if we're not acting in that way then we're not woke and there's quite a there's a lot of energy behind these um these thoughts and these feelings um and the expectations of these people um and the way that they think that people who are woke should be behaving um they're ver it's very opinionated and that people interacting in these discussions are, are quite black and white really in their way of thinking and it's like all or nothing and there's no in between and it's like if you're woke then it's almost like if you're woke then you have to not be afraid of this virus then you have to not wear a mask then you know you have you have to basically if you're woke you go back to your life as it was before this virus existed but you're living a spiritual clean non-consumerist life yeah so you're supporting green companies and you're leading a green lifestyle and all of that and you're like super super clean and everything and you're really spiritual and and so you're kind of like walking that and living and breathing that path yeah and if if that's who you are like you know like a true seeker or yogini if that's if that's who you are that you can only be that in these people's minds um you know you can only be a seeker or a yogini or woke in these people's minds if you have no fear of the virus if you kind of don't even know if you believe it existed if you certainly don't wear a mask if you're quite happy to hug and kiss and shake hands with strangers if you're fine being in a crowded room with lots of people with no protection um, if you don't believe that masks work anyway and you think it's all like this part of this whole larger agenda to control the the masses and bring in um, compulsory vaccinations and microchip people so that you know you can constantly be monitored and your health status always known so that if you get sick you can be whisked off to a quarantine center you know and it's it's really extreme 
like there's no middle ground it's like all or nothing and then the other side of of the equation for the you're not woke people yeah is oh they're the people that are walking around outside and they're scared of this virus and they're wearing masks and gloves and you know when they get near to other people they're kind of looking a bit startled and they step away and they leave masses of room with the social distancing and they don't want to go into a crowded space um, and they don't feel safe using public transport um, and they're not partic- and they don't they don't want to like you know go out and support the local businesses by partaking in a restaurant or whatever and they don't want to meet up with their friends in person or certainly not meet up with their friends and 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 not wear a mask um, and they're not comfortable with you know the whole like oh we can meet in small gatherings of like 10 or less and they're not comfortable doing that without social distancing and and without a mask yeah and 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 so these people are dismissed and they're they're seen as like oh they're just sheep they're muzzled they're believing the mass media they are not thinking for themselves they have no mind of their own they're quite happy to be injected with a vaccine quite happy to be like monitored on cctv for the rest of their lives and told what they can and cannot do um and have their health controlled by like a higher authority um and they're just going to go back to their old ways and keep like um guzzling and guzzling and guzzling and consuming with no respect for the environment or the world or one another and i think but that's not the way the world works the world is not black and white people are not black and white people do not fit into two boxes you're not either person a or person b there's like a million trillion different variations of people and i get quite um offended and hurt by these people who make such rash statements about the fact that if you're somewhere in the middle because you don't know who to believe and you haven't quite worked it out yet and hey look you know if you haven't quite worked it out yet and you don't know who to believe i would argue that you are more intelligent than the people that are just believing this or just believing this because there are no facts everything is a hypothesis everything is an opinion yeah there's like there is no solid evidence about any of this yeah there's no solid evidence that if you wear a mask you're going to get what you're going to get sick and there's no solid evidence to say if you don't wear a mask you won't get sick it's it's ridiculous um and and so this this really like annoys me that these people who are supposedly spiritual people yeah who are supposedly awake who are supposedly on a higher path that is in line with their higher self and with the overall higher consciousness of the universe yeah that these people who think they are so superior to everybody else who's a sheep who's not woke yeah so brutal and so judgmental and critical of other people and they're they're so i don't know like i don't know where their heart is in this equation they're like all all kind of like all about themselves and their tribe and they don't seem to care about other people and they don't seem to be taking into consideration the fact that people are scared people are very afraid i mean it's normal to be afraid surely when you know we so we go from one way of life and we get shoved really brutally into another way of life with like barely any warning whatsoever and suddenly it's like oh the world is in crisis there's a mass pandemic there's this killer virus out there that is just baffling doctors and taking people out left right and center faster than we can keep up with i mean how can you not be fearful of that and even if it's like not quite so bad as they made out in the beginning and even if some of the facts got a bit scrambled because nobody really knew exactly what they were talking about and it was all hypothesis it's still a scary idea it's still a scary predicament for people to be in and even if not quite so many people are actually dying of the virus and most people are surviving it or whatever it's like 
you know, if someone told you there was a really bad flu around this year, yeah, and it was going to take out a load of elderly people and a load of vulnerable people, and even if you weren't elderly or vulnerable, if you got it, you were going to feel sick for a month, yeah, and probably be in bed for most of it, and you'd be really weak and exhausted, and afterwards it would take you a couple of months to get back on your feet again. You wouldn't want it, would you? You wouldn't voluntarily, voluntarily meet up with someone for... Um, a coffee and a chat or lunch or whatever if if they were like oh I've had this really bad flu and I'm kind of over it but I'm not quite over it I mean you wouldn't walk yourself into that situation voluntarily um, unless you were of the opinion that the that each time you caught a virus and your body had to go through that kind of healing in order to 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 move through it and back to health again you know like the, some people believe and I'm not saying that I don't believe in this I do when it comes to a cold and when it comes to a flu like a normal flu it's like there is there is a um a detoxing that goes on when when you heal from these things and you're like you know expelling all of this like kind of mucus and blah, gunk and crap from your body yeah it's like you're purging all of the old stuff that was in there that was stuck that needed to come out and the, the virus is a channel for that to happen. And, you know, like, I believe in that. I believe that it's really healthy to get a good cold every so often just to cleanse the body thoroughly. Um, and it keeps you strong as well. And it, it keeps you protected and it, it's good for your immune system. But I don't think this situation um, really, like... It, it, we didn't walk into this situation with the confidence that that was perhaps the best thing for us, yeah, because there are people that are being seriously affected by this, there are people that are dying from this, and there are people that even if they don't die are having months taken out of their lives and are, have potentially uh, lifelong consequences um, afterwards and they're going to need like heart transplants and liver transplants and stuff, so I, I don't I don't really feel like the flippant behavior of the woke people is particularly woke I just don't I don't think these people are awake I don't think these people are spiritual I think these people are, are coming from their ego not their higher self they're certainly not coming from their heart and I don't understand how, where they've come from and how they have how they have become so so lost so clouded so so one-minded that so so opinionated that they can't see all of the gray in between and they can no longer empathize with the people at the other end of the scale and I think it's like you know you need to be able to empathize with everybody I can empathize with the people who are terrified I can also empathize with the people who aren't I can empathize with the people who are vulnerable and um, who are, you know, who have compromised immune systems anyway, on the people that who have perhaps lost people through this situation, the people who are um, lonely, who ha are experiencing mental health um, concerns due to this crisis, you know, who are depressed, who are anxious, who are experiencing panic attacks and all of that. So I can really empathise with all of those people. And yet I can also empathise with the people who are fed up with being cooped up and trapped inside, the people who do not want their rights taken away from them, the people who do not believe it's as bad as it's been made out to be and who, who believe that it's part of a higher, larger um, agenda. You know, I can empathise with both sides, yeah. Um, I can empathise with the people who are extroverts and who really, really miss physical interaction with other people who miss touch who miss face-to-face -face conversation who miss the hustle and bustle of life who wants to be out there doing things experiencing things traveling going places i can empathize with both sides and i don't think either way of wanting or desiring is right or wrong i think the correct place is somewhere in the middle where we slide up and down the scale on a daily, perhaps even hourly or moment by moment basis 
as we readjust our perspective of the world because we are all constantly changing. There is no such thing as static. Everyone and everything is constantly changing and constantly evolving. And I think if we waste our time just standing there pointing fingers, which is what I feel like a lot of people are doing right now, um, and it's people on both, both ends of this scale, are basically pointing fingers at the other people and saying, oh, you're paranoid, you're crazy, you're a conspiracy theorist because you believe in this and you believe in that and all those people are like, you know, those, those people aren't talking, the, speaking the truth because, you know, all their, all their videos and whatever have been like, you know, pulled off social media and they're being like um, taken down in the news and, you know, and other people are speaking up and speaking out against them and saying, no, what they're saying is rubbish and it's slander and blah, 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 blah. And then there were other people saying, this is the way we should be, and this is what is happening, and this is the truth. And all of this finger pointing is going on in the meantime, between people saying, my way is right, my way is right, and if you don't believe my way, you're crazy, and if you don't believe my way, you're crazy, and you're woke, and you're not woke, and it's like, whoa, so much noise, <laughs> and so much anger, and so much judgment and criticism, and where's the love? Like, where is the love and the compassion that, that supposedly woke up? Yeah, during, I mean, that's, that's woke. Woke is, is loving everybody. Woke is caring about everybody. Woke is worrying about your neighbor and your friend and the people out there who are really struggling during, in this experience. Woke is not calling people who want to stay in quarantine selfish because they're not thinking about the lives of... Um, other people and they're not thinking about the livelihood of other people and the economy and the state of the world that's not woke woke is being gentle and compassionate and understanding that everybody has a different perspective and a different experience and everybody is traveling through this in their own unique way and each unique way is equally as valid and valuable and deserves your acceptance and your appreciation and your respect and your love and so my, my, not argument, that's too harsh a word, but my, my thought here for today and my, what I would like to present really is, is that instead of, instead of being fully woke and standing up all the way, which is what we're being called upon to do, um, and, and people are being called upon to stand up this way or this way, yeah? Stand up the woke way or stand up the not woke way and fight for what you want in the coming months, yeah? Fight for the world that you want in the coming months, in the coming years. Um, I don't think it's necessary to be fully woke and to stand up fully. I think it's okay to be half woke and to half stand up. Um, I think it's okay to dip your toe in. I don't think you have to dive in head first all the way without thinking about it really long and hard and taking time to really evaluate the situation and weigh up the odds, weigh up the pros and cons, weigh up the whole thing, the whole picture, yeah. And also to look at the picture that you can't see and to imagine all of the different, you know, scenarios and and futures that could come out of this experience and to take care it's like when we meet someone new in a relationship yeah so a person that we are attracted to and we go on a date or whatever we hook up we don't go to church or wherever and get married that same evening if we like them do we like we wait we take our time we get to know them we spend time together, we do things together, we have conversations, we figure out what we do and what we don't have in common, we figure out if our personalities go together or if they clash, if our belief systems are the same, if our values are the same or not. And then if all of that works out, yeah, and we get on and there is still a chemistry once there is also a friendship, and we think perhaps we would like to live together for like, you know, a considerable amount of time, then we might move in with each other. And then we might get married. And if we're religious, then we probably just move in with each other immediately. I mean, get married immediately. But like, we don't rush in until we've actually studied one another. Yeah. We don't decide, 
we want to change career unless we research it first and we study it and we do a bit of groundwork and we have to kind of like learn the lay of the land and everything so why would we why would we decide one way or another what we believe about this situation without actually taking the necessary time to get the facts together and to get the right facts together and until there are people out there who actually you know definitively know what the right facts are we can't really know can we you know unless we're like that connected to our higher being or our higher self that we can look down from above and see it but most of us can't see that clearly and that far ahead and even if we can are we that confident in what we're feeling in what our intuition is telling us that we would be prepared to risk not only our own life but other people's lives because if we walk outside yeah without a mask and without social distancing and we come into contact with other people can we really know that we're not carrying this thing and even if we're you know not symptomatic it's like we can't can we because it it comes and it goes and nobody really understands the true nature of it yet and every single day we're coming into contact with people so every single day we could have picked it up from someone else so there's no way to say hey i'm fit i'm healthy and i'm well and i'm not going to infect anyone else there's no way to say that there isn't i mean none of us can know that right now unless we're doing a test every day and they're telling us that the tests don't work anyway and anyway there aren't enough of the tests to do a test every day um and so like i think it's more woke personally to think about other people in that way and to to definitely do the social distance thing so that i'm not too near to other people so if you know for some reason i have contracted it somewhere somehow i'm not going to accidentally give it to someone else who then gives it to someone else who get then gives it to someone else and then i continue to give it to other people as well and then it all like spreads again i think the the loving caring compassionate thoughtful thing to do is to err on the side of caution to give this whole thing the benefit of the doubt because we don't know for sure and to to take precautions against potentially giving this thing to other people and then you know when when we know that the rate of reinfection has stopped then then maybe it's time for a different approach but i think until this thing is like more under control um it's it's sensible it's wise to to think a bit carefully and to move a bit slowly there's no need to go from one extreme to the other and to rush straight in that why not that spend you know a few weeks or a month just enjoying the liberty of being able to go for a walk every day um, and being able to get a takeout coffee or a takeout meal from a place um, you know the being able to to visit a different shop that we perhaps missed and needed for some reason um, because something that we possess has broken or run out um, or been used you know being been been used up um and and then when we're confident and comfortable that that's working and it hasn't like tipped the curve in the wrong direction then perhaps we can you know be a bit more confident about experimenting one step further but this whole like oh that's just open the world up again and that start flying here there and everywhere again and that start you know like going on holiday and having tourists and and allowing everyone from everywhere into everywhere um seems a little bit premature um, and I know that the economy is really important to the world and to people's lives and livelihood and survival um, and that money is like you know the thing that kind of makes the world go round whether you love it or you hate it but we also need to 
to, to look to health and safety and work out how, how we can take that just as seriously. Um, and I think that there's a lot of thinking and a lot of changing that has to go on um, on a higher level, yeah, with the people who have the power to to put things into practice and action with out throughout the world um, as to how perhaps the economy might be supported in a safer way while things get tested through um, and I don't know the answer to that because you know that's that's way above my pay grade but I don't think we should all be forced to rush back to work simply because otherwise we're going to be in a massive depression because both things the pandemic and the virus and depression are, are are dangerous to people's lives like are equally as dangerous and will have as drastic a consequences i totally understand that and people will die from 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 both sides of that but there's got to be a middle way there's got to be a middle ground there's got to be a way to support people financially to enable people to be able to work from home to to be of service um in a in a way that that kind of works for the world um and you know maybe that's maybe that's just bartering and trading services in exchange for food um i don't know i have no idea as i said that is just way above my pay grade but i really do think that moving forward maybe the way to support the world and have a better world from here on in is is actually for everything to go backwards to go backwards to how things were before a long time ago um where where we did things like you know grow our food and raise raise um livestock and exchange those for other things that we needed um and you know i don't know it was a long time ago but i kind of think that 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 we all need to be a bit less money driven and a bit less greedy and 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 we also, you know, the, the people who aren't in, in, the, in the top section of society in terms of earning, who aren't part of that elite, who aren't the wealthy, the people who are just like the normal people, like, we spend our entire lives working in order to pay our bills with very much to show on top of that. And the harder we work, the more we seem to be penalized as well because the more money we earn then up to a degree then the more tax we have to pay and so the poor you know there's a there's a weird place in between where the, the harder you work and the more you earn the poorer you get and you're better off not working so hard and only earning this much and then you've still got the same amount of money and it's just it's just counterproductive and illogical and it's it's a bit soul destroying really um, when you work that hard to build something and then you get stuck in that place where you're worse off than when you weren't working as hard and when you hadn't like kind of built built something to that degree um, and success should always be celebrated hard work should always be celebrated and I don't think society does that really very well um, you know because because the more you and the more you owe and and then there's the constant escalation of the price of things so that you know just to have a roof of your head these days is astronomically expensive um and you know it's really hard to be able to afford to buy somewhere now so we're all stuck renting and then the price of rent has just gone up and up and up so nobody really ends up living in the space that they want to be in and um, the price of food is so ridiculously expensive the price of clothes is ridiculously expensive and the quality has gone down and nothing is natural everything is like synthetic and man-made and like what happened to natural products 
what happened to being able to go into a high street store and getting you know an item of clothing made out of a hundred percent cotton or a hundred percent wool and why is it when when in those stores you actually do find something that's a hundred percent cotton or a hundred percent wool it costs twice as much as it ever used to and twice as much as it's shit I mean it's ridiculous it's weird and the fact that we've all accepted this um and that we're happy to wear you know synthetic clothing made out of petrochemicals just because it's cheap um when it comes from a factory and it's made by people whose lives are miserable it's like i mean that's where we need to wake up um that's where things need to change um you know and in terms of like the land well we really do need to go back to organic you know we need to like stop putting chemicals on everything into everything and then wrecking people's bodies as a result when they're eating this stuff and you know and then pretending that 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 it's not bad for you and that it's not unhealthy i mean th these are the things that really need fixing and figuring out and the amount of emissions that are put out into the world i mean th there needs to be a serious reduction in pollution um and I, I kind of, yeah, that, that's where the wake people need to focus their attention, yeah, not on this stupid debate about whether to wear a mask or not and whether the people who are choosing to wear a mask are sheep and stupid and, you know, of a lesser um, worth. I mean, like, that was just, just the most ridiculous thing to be fixated upon and yet, you know, this, this debate has been going on on social media for weeks now um and so yeah i just i guess i just wanted to like speak out and say something about it because i find it quite offensive um and they find it really like small-minded and short-sighted um and i think they're really missing the bigger picture and i know they think they're really awake um but i think they would need to to go back and reevaluate and reassess what being awake really means um so on that note the end of my little rant um i hope that those of you who i haven't completely and utterly alienated or offended can allow yourself to feel more okay about where you are in this picture yeah because wherever you are is okay wherever you are is the right space wherever you are is in my opinion woke okay so on that note i shall leave you um bye